Ooh, we're back, baby. Horns up. Talking Texas podcast. Fisher Disopolis, DJ, Nikki Snacks, Crowder, the Quan Cosby. Those listening on 102.7 ESPN Austin. What up? Happy game day. Good to, I guess, see you guys. For Or good for you to hear us. Wish we could talk back, but that's just not how radio works. The rivalry is back. It is one of the most underrated rivalries in college football. We don't like them. They hate us. <laughs> As the Texas Longhorns go to Fayetteville, um, the last time we played is a matchup. I bring it up a lot, but it's a matchup that's really discussed heavily in our tenure of doing this show as one of the more pivotal points of Sark's tenure and recreating what this Texas brand of football is from a recruiting standpoint, from a gameplay standpoint. So, Q, we'll start with you because you've played in this rivalry before, not at Fayetteville, but at DKR. Five for 67 and a score. Uh, your senior year. What is this solid, so, solid, solid stat line? What does this rivalry mean? I guess from a horns perspective, and how big is this game going into their house? I mean, I think you not you the, the nail on the head. You said we we don't like them, and we don't. Our, I mean, I actually got offered to go to the game this weekend on a great plane and all that, and I was like, no, who wants to go to Fayetteville? <laughs> um, so that tells you how much. We care about that spot. Only thing good about it is North Arkansas is Walmart. But um, and then they really dislike us. I think I told a story in the past where I was in Little Rock, not even in Fayetteville, at a children's hospital, and almost got kicked out because I said "hook 'em horns" to a kid. Um, but playing them was fun, man. You know, you don't like them in an SEC team. They even back then they had that so-called SEC size and all of that gibberish. But we. We put the smack down on them. But I'll be honest, when I really learned their hate for us, is I went to the game, Sark's, you know, season, like you said, when their D-line absolutely destroyed ours. We had probably 80 yards total the whole freaking game. It was one of the weirdest, most embarrassing things I've ever seen. Um, as a Texas fan and their fans, I've never really almost got into a fight with any fan because I just really oh. don't to them i kind of laugh even horns down don't quite bo don't bother me but the closest i've seen multiple texas fans and even myself finally have to go woo was leaving fanville uh they stormed the field uh i actually had a buddy remind me of that this week and the walk because nothing's close they were some of the rudest fans and in the weirdest way, they were so nice before the game, mainly because I was probably with Walmart people and I got lucky. But they were freaking – I left with only Longhorns, and they don't like us, man. So it's we, we owe them something. The cool, the, the cool thing is here, you know, hearing Sark talk about the amount of players that's on this team that was on that one that now that this week came up, have that taste in their mouth that they want to, you know, revenge and, and get out of it. So – it's going to be fun. You know, they, they have really, really good running attack, and our defense is going to have their hands full on the road. So it's it's going to be a fun game. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they will start there, I guess. You know, um, they have what hurts us typically in years past. And even if it hasn't hurt us as much this year, when a quarterback can run, it's almost like a PTSD moment for us as Texas fans and guys watching the game and their quarterback is not the best thrower we've seen, but he's on the same level as Pavi as a runner and how he can move in the pocket. And he's also six, six. So not only can he move, he's a big dude. Now he's limped around and their team has been very hot and cold. And they also have Jaquindon Jackson in the backfield, who was a one-time Texas commit. So you bet best believe he's licking his chops uh, uh, for this game and, and, and to get in some action. But when push comes to shove, I feel based off what we saw last week, and you could Q, you could tell us about how it was boots on the ground off the bye week. Quinn looks to be back to what he was. The offense was dialed in. We beat a team we should have. We didn't get the sacks we needed, but we got good pressures. The defense has been playing well. Everyone looks to be pretty healthy. If you're a national championship team, if you're the number three seed in the college football playoff, like we are now projected and now projected as the number one SEC team on the road at home, no matter, this is a game where you go and take care of business and put a stamp on it 
and put a stamp on this rivalry and start this new age of the rivalry off right and take them out in their own place and make it a demolition, in my opinion. Like this is a very this is not as pivotal maybe as an A and M game, but as far as going on the road into a hostile environment and taking care of business where anything could happen. This is a huge statement moment that the Texas Longhorns now again have an opportunity to have on Saturday. I actually disagree. I think it's as pivotal as an AM game because if you lose this, you lose this one, that one is not as crazy. <laughs> I mean, it is, but it is, it is because it hasn't <laughs> happened in so long. But I think, and, that, and then there's there's a bigger picture perspective. This is going to prepare you for the AM game. Um, the Big House did. Um, this game, because of the hate, the combination of that, will uh, w- they saw it last time? There, there will be it will be comparable. They want to ruin now that we're in the SEC. They wanted it before, but they want to ruin our season, so to speak, in their eyes. And we saw what they did to Tennessee. So, yeah, man, they're going to try to run the ball. I, I will say this: that quarterback, not as accurate, but he can throw. If you look at uh, what's that thing y'all check pro football focus he's mm-hmm. he's in the top 15 and even throwing and so a lot of people wouldn't think that because we've seen those games where he's a little erratic but um, because of his legs and the way you have to play him it opens up other opportunities and he'll occasionally hit those so and then like you said Jackson who came in actually came in as a quarterback didn't win the spot went to Utah turned into a running back which he should have done in the first place from Duncanville uh, yeah, of course he wants to beat us, man. It's, it's Texas boys. So, I, man, it, it's going to be fun. It, it's a it's a huge robbery. It's it's awesome that it's back. Like, that's where I say it's, it's not back from a standpoint of the Texas A&M level because you have two Texas teams, but it's back Southwest Conference rival. And uh, and they they're, they're going to – they had a bye week, I think, and, and had a few injuries that they got healthy on. So, <laughs> yeah, two weeks to prepare, and I think we're going to get everything they have. Yeah, it's – it's definitely a pivotal game um, just from an identity perspective. But in the long run, too, if you're looking at social media and what everyone has to say about us, it seems like no matter what happens, they're going to have something bad to say. Oh, you lost to Arkansas. You're welcome to the SEC. Oh, you beat Arkansas. They were only five and four, and they're not that good. Like People keep complaining that we're not a team that's beat any ranked opponents this year when we've had, we've had technically ranked wins against Michigan, OU and Vanderbilt. Now we've but just made them at, unranked. When they look at like the college football playoff <laughs> rankings, they're like you have zero w- ranked wins. And it's like, why don't we like fast forward until like when the season's over and then see how many of those teams end up ranked, you know? And I hate when people are just trying to pick apart us, but we have the target on our back. I mean, that's, we knew that was going to happen in the sec. Um, here's the thing about where we were, when we lost to this team in 2021, we had hardly any five star, four star big boys in the trenches that, you know, are going to be first round draft picks right now. We've got that. Sark addressed all that in recruiting. And that's the thing that dominated us last time against these guys. And of course, they had a completely different quarterback in KJ Jefferson. Now he's over at, at UCF, you know, still, still playing. Can't believe he's still playing. But regardless, like another running quarterback, another mobile quarterback. And I kind of like the fact that he's six, six, because that means he's not as slippery as a guy who's six foot, you know, who's quick and and speedy like like Pavia. Pavia is kind of a smaller, slender guy. The six, six guy. I mean, our team is really good at tackling. So what that screams to me is that you got more body to tackle. Right. Anthony Hill is going to put, you know, body on body on you and you're not going to get away from that. So um, I think we've upgraded in the trenches on both the D line and the O line since those games. And so I'm really looking for us to kind of take back that identity of, of what we're able to do. And, you know, I mean, obviously going to Fateville, those fans are going to be angry just seeing us out there with burn orange and bring on that, bring all that on, you know, like that's just going to be what it's like every single year and every single game you play away. Um, Mm -hmm. But I think it needs to be a statement win. I, I think if we play a close one again, I mean, look, wins a win. But the criticism is going to be out the wazoo, and people are going to start questioning whether or not you know this this team actually deserves to be in the college football playoff. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a completely you win though. What? Sorry, team. No, I'm no, said it. Win like if we win, we win. Not to go against what I how I typically am. If we win, like, we win. win. Sure, yeah. I mean, like, if we go undefeated, we're going. But I I want this... a resounding win. I don't want any doubt left in it for my for our guys. You know. Yeah. Well, 
here's where we are and why Quan, I agree with your point on the this game is just as important as the AM game, is just as important as the Kentucky game. We are the only SEC team who controls our own destiny from a home field advantage standpoint in the SEC championship. Because the second qualifier for teams that are tied with the same record in the SEC is common is is record against common opponents. So if we beat Arkansas, we get the edge on Tennessee. If we beat Kentucky, we get the edge on Ole Miss. If we play AM and we beat them, guess what? We have one less loss than they would have in the SEC, and that would give us home field advantage in the SEC championship. We are the only team with that scenario. So just like we've been saying, we know the talent of our team, our coaching staff, the players know their own talent. They know what they're capable of. It's just a matter of going out there and executing. And, and playing our game and not playing down to their level. The, the thing about KJ Jefferson, we made him look like Jalen Milrow. And no offense to KJ Jefferson, but you just mentioned he's on. He's playing for UCF now, and he's gonna. He, he's trying. He's trying to get drafted in the NFL. Jalen Milrow is gonna be a first round pick. There is a difference between those two guys. But we made him look like Jalen Milrow in that game. He ran all over us. He dominated. And you're exactly right. That was year one of Sark. This yeah, is year four of his career, probably. Honestly, <laughs> it could yeah. be. We, we're the only. We're the only school and team in college football that has not changed a coordinator or a head coach in the last four years. We're at a different point now, and we have to prove that in this game. And I think we will. Yeah, I agree. You know, it's fascinating. I was thinking about that. And, and I, I agree, Nick. Do I want us to go over there? Because this is what I do feel like. We do what we did versus Florida, and we get a 14-point lead, and they have to throw the ball and do those things. They're in trouble. And I think we stretch the lead because them throwing the ball first and then running it second is not their strength. If no. we have a close game and they can play their game and they're running the ball, the quarterback Green's using his legs, it's going to be a dogfight. Now, what's annoying is we beat them even in a close game. Oh, they're five and four. They beat Tennessee at home. We beat Vandy in a close game. They beat Bama at home, it's so funny to me how the same teams that beat teams in this position, we find a way to win. Clearly, these teams are better. They're playing better and all the above. And what it boils down to us is we win, we're good, no matter what. We're the only one that co controls our, our destiny, like Todd said. But, oh, we have to do this. I think for us, two levels. One, it would be nice to go smack them around for my blood pressure. But two... <laughs> The hell with all the haters. We have them. We love them. We get them. No matter what, they're not going to be happy. That, well, this is what they know. College football is better when the University of Texas is better. But at the same time, they cannot stand when the University of Texas is better. Now, to their defense, I'll give them a little bit of credit. CDC and team do a really good job. But I, even as a homer, I have to admit, it's a little bit in their face. We Going back to the intro of joining the SEC versus Oklahoma's that look like you, you go from a production, an L.A. production to a, you know, remember back in the day when you go to the theater and they bootleg it? That's what yeah. Oklahoma's look like. And, and, and so that stuff like that comes off wrong to people. They get annoyed and say we're flashy and, and truly inside the burn orange. No, there's only one burn orange team on the country. So they hate on us. It, it seems flashy because it's thrown in your face, but it's not, you know, and ultimately we're doing our thing, but no, nah, man, I, I think it's going to be, we're going to have to weather the storm, but if Quinn comes out, like he did, if the O line comes out, like they did and we execute Sark, you know, it's funny. We've probably said this five or six times over the three or four years. Sark kind of called X's and O's schematically his best game. Bro, he he did some stuff in that Florida game that they're going to have to prepare for and get their eyes right for. So if that continues to evolve and um, we are healthy. So they're going to have their hands full. It's, it's just the truth. Us healthy is a very, very, may be the best team in the country. So hopefully they go out and execute like it on the road. Yeah, I mean, you bring up a point from the X's and O's standpoint. Something Toss called for going into the Florida game was opening that playbook. 
not being conservative, not playing, not scared, but not playing like shelled almost like showing them what you got, like getting some trick plays going, firing up the team. Like we ran that one misdirection play that was insane. Like we ran some of the best plays I've seen us run all year in that Florida game and continuing to open up that playbook on the road. It's still an sec team. Like even if they're five and four, they still beat Tennessee. Who's tied with us. Like you're saying as that number one team right now, per the standings in the SEC. So anybody can beat anybody any given Saturday in this conference. And I think we've learned that. Fortunately, we learned that against Georgia, who's a team that's heralded as the biggest blue blood of the past couple of years of this conference, the king of the conference the past couple of years. Ole so Miss we smacked them around a little bit, dog. But Ole Miss smacked them around a little bit. But guess what? Ole Miss lost to Kentucky. Right, and Georgia smacked three, us around, <laughs> and through who's three and five. Like it, it's like anything can happen in this conference on a given Saturday, which is why yes, we all want to go in and beat the crap out of them for our blood pressure to make a statement to get people on Twitter be enough of them being it, like they don't have any ranked wins. There's like it's, but at the end of the day, like you got you, you got to get a win. It's never. I, I tell you what, it's never going to change because that's the same thing that people are saying about Ole Miss. When they're when they're criticizing Ole Miss, who also lost to LSU as well, right? No, it, it's just the SEC chatter. It's just how it goes in this conference. And guess what? Michigan last year in, too, though, did they not? Yeah, oh, of course. And in five years, they're not going to say when we if we are to lose a game against an SEC opponent, they're not going to say welcome to the SEC, but they're going to say you still don't know what SEC football is all about. Like that that narrative, it's never going to change. It's just about us us flying above it. Basically, is what I'm going to say. And then we if, if we beat him, if we beat him, that's how we answer it. That's it. That's all that is. You know, but you know what? You're right. And you know what? This is what I. This is what I. Um. What I believe. There's going to be a lot of haters out there that never changes. It. What mm. I believe, though, if we get to the SEC championship, I think it does change within the SEC. There's such a kind of conference crazy. Now we'll never be that, and that's going to annoy them. Because if it's not us, we don't give a you know what who it is. But I actually think there's going to be a level of respect from the SEC people if we go and take care of business and get to that championship, and especially win it and get the buy and all the above, because that is tough. You know that, that they they actually respect that enough and be like they can say, oh, it's easy, it's just, no bull crap. If you go take care of business and you win it, you win it, and they're going to jump on board. Outside the SEC, they'll always have plenty to say. Because we can even admit that there's a bit of an SEC bias. But, nah, man, I, I, I'm i with you. They're, they're going to be haters. We've always had them, even when we sucked. Oh, they were really out then. Um, but we take care of our business, to your point, at least within the conference. They're not going to be able to do anything but say, okay, tip tat, got it. That's why I told my, my boy, and, I, and I, again, I say this, Longhorns, don't kill me. I've actually known Billy Lucci for a long time. He's um, Tech Sachs, one of the founders. Um, he, we talk a lot about our teams and and argue and laugh and and joke about it. And he tweeted the other day. He's arguing with someone, and I go, Billy, you keep arguing with everyone on Twitter, and you keep bringing up all these dumb stats slash, like you said, oh, we y'all haven't beat a top. T-. Well, dude. Is LSU going to be ranked by the end of it? You know, are these other teams going to be ranked? No, they still have to play other teams where by the end of it, when we play each other, they may not be ranked. So we can all pull a still shot and say, oh, we did this and y'all didn't. But at the end, I was like, you do know we play each other. You might want to focus on that versus where we have come, how we are, because if we run up there and beat the brakes off of y'all, you're going to just look dumb. So essentially, to your point, Toss, forget the haters. We go whoop everybody's butt and get in that playoff, get a bye, win the SEC championship, go back to back Big Twelve championship, then SEC. What can they say? Yeah, and I'll to circle it back, like to the beginning of the season. It's not like anyone who covered the Longhorns, including all four of us, didn't recognize that we had an opportunity from a strength of schedule standpoint, even though we yeah. were playing SEC schools, to capitalize on what we believed our team was coming from from a talent perspective, from a talent standpoint. And guess what? We're doing that. We said to each other all on the show that we were either, that, it, that if we lost a Georgia game, we would still have an opportunity to get to the SEC championship. And turns out that's happened. And here we are in the exact spot that we predicted and believed our team could get to. 
So sometimes you're going to have an easier strength of schedule with the SEC opponents where they are in any given year. And then other times that SEC schedule is going to look terrifying. And that's just the way that this conference goes. And I mean, I guess we could say we're thankful that it was year one for us and a transitionary no, no, year, but like, I, I just, I think I just had an epiphany. <laughs> no, we've said it all the time. Y'all know I'm screaming at the top of my lungs and go, the SEC is top heavy. It's always been. You got LSU will be pretty good every five or six years. They had that unbelievable run with Joe Burrow. If you go back, it's Nick Saban. So it's not like they were winning it every five or six years. They had those years. Bama and Georgia have, have multiple championships within the last 10 years. Name the other school that has that. I mean, but even with George, even with Georgia, though, it's like before Kirby Smart, when it was Mark Richt and Les Dude, Miles, who were both at LSU and Georgia, they were very like they they could never get to the same cut as Nick Saban was at Alabama. Thank you. That's well, more the rotation. I mean, Auburn had it for a little bit too. <clears throat> Auburn yeah, had what one, people want to admit is the conference is good, but it's not what they've said okay. it is. It's very top heavy. Now right. they're really good teams. They play their butts off. There is a certain level of culture, and I'm gonna tell you. It means more. We've talked about it. It's because their fans are crazy in a good way. For sure. They show up. They get up early. They're drunk as hell. They have a good time. So that's a lot of why the SEC kind of aura of it means more. And they have a very good marketing person that did that. Um, and, and really, they should thank Saban. I mean, more than anything, because Saban took it to another level. But we've literally cracked the code of now, all of a sudden, they're calling it out. Well, your schedule is easy. But what do you mean? I yeah. thought you couldn't get through an SEC schedule A&M. Right. Yeah. Well, what, 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 what you talking yeah, about? A little counter to – yeah. yeah. No, I, think talking about we, the mouth. I think the thing we, we have to consider as well is that when you schedule SEC games, right, like obviously people got to play each other, but I'll, I'll like kind of put this in perspective like with the NFL. If you're a playoff team, if you're a good team that's supposed to be here, we, we me and Toss talked about this the other day, you got to beat the teams you're supposed to beat, right? So – they put us in front of there and, and like you're knocking us because we beat these teams, right? Like at the end of the day, if you're a good team, you're a good team. You can't control what your schedule looks like. But if you take care of business, you take care of business. That's that's it. Like for the Chiefs, you know, like if you look at their they're nine and L, right? Like are all of their games hard? No, right? But they took care of business when they need to take care of business and they're gonna get to the playoffs. Like that's that's how it is. No, they're just talking out both sides of their mouth. Kentucky beats Ole Miss. Oh my gosh, it's the SEC. Vanderbilt beats Bama. Hey, that SEC is hard. Texas beat Texas beat Vanderbilt. Oh well, it, you just beat them by three. And that's I mean, it's it's just it, we, let's call a spade a spade. They the haters are real, and they talk out both sides of their mouth when it comes to the burn orange. I, those those people will also, if they're up against an, an argument, someone who's a Big Ten person and they're saying oh sec versus big 10 they'll be like look at the teams we have texas ole miss tennessee Alabama. Exactly. Just, like, exactly. it, 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 you're right though it, juan if we take care of business there will be at some point a, an embrace from the conference when oh, you yeah. get into conversations other like than that. one school yeah and also like in five years we'll have a lot more tape between our rivalry with alabama and with lsu and with georgia right and and they're from that beautiful things will come and malicious things will come. And that's like, that's why the sec it, why it does mean more. Yeah. You're such a good point. The best marketing, the best marketing <laughs> yeah. for a conference. I, I, I totally think too, that like you give it two, three years, all this talk is going to, is going to cool down and they're going to be like, okay, they're one of us now. I think so many people are just, they're seasoned in believing that like, Oh, you guys were in the big, big 10 or sorry, you guys were in the big 12. Like, you know, that's that's the little brother conference like that. That ain't crap. You know, like come to SEC. And, and candidly, for the last 10 years, we weren't getting it done either. Right. We exactly. were in the Big 12 and we weren't. Yeah, we were not good in the Big 12. And so <laughs> there's definitely still a little leftover, you know, feelings. Well, and then we won it. it. We're just yeah, we disappointing right people. At the end of the day, we're disappointing the haters. And they're like, oh, crap, I can't wait. Oh, they won the Big 12. Now they're going to go to SEC and get their ass kicked. Oh, hold on. They're, they're winning the SEC right now. This is – this is hold on. I had tweets saved for when they lost to this team, and it didn't work out. And so uh, kudos to the, the Longhorns on lot, the big one. It's a lot easier to shut a hater up than it is to change their mind. That's that's how I feel that's about it. In a nutshell. <laughs> that's, right? that's medicine in the world is winning. No, that's true. That's real. Yeah. That's every day all day. Well, like to win, this rivalry, though, we've met – 
we played the first time we played them was in the 1800s. Kind of crazy. 1894. We play them 79 times. We lead the rivalry 56 to 23. So it's a 709 winning percentage. We've we've relatively we've dominated for lack of a better term in this rivalry. The weird thing to me is as long as this has been around, there's no name to this rivalry. Like, why is there no name? Why is there no official name? Well, because, because of, it could because be of Jerry the Jones, rivalry. but everyone hates Jerry. <laughs> yeah, you know, ultimately, I mean, th- there's you got the Texas one with with A and M, and then you have, you know, um, the Red River with Oklahoma. At, at some, you can't one. The name typically comes with some sponsorship dollars, <laughs> but right. you, you can't do them all. And I guess, and 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 the business of college football that people for some reason for a long time didn't want to talk about. Yeah, that's it. We didn't want to sponsor anything, especially if we're going there. And I would argue we would have, but our Kansas, outside of Jerry Jones, would did they have the money and the people and the sponsors to be like, all right, we're coming to this game, let's sponsor it. And so that that's I think some of that factored in, but it is yeah. what it is. I, I was hoping I, one of us would have something that would then get coined as the rivalry name, name and then I don't know. You, you heard it here first on, on Horns Up Talking Texas guys. The Texas I don't know Canada. anything about Arkansas. I know, I know a lot of Arkansas, actually. I know but very little. Unless Walmart wants to sponsor it, it's not going to happen. And back in those days, Walmart wasn't around. <laughs> <laughs> the 18, I mean, who was Pratt? Was it Grover Cleveland? It could be the Grover Cleveland Bowl. I don't know who hey, was you know what? And I wouldn't say this because I'm very, very pro HEB. Walmart should sponsor it <laughs> because, you know, the competition – when oh, we should do a. That's their headquarters. You come to Texas. It's kind of like a take that HEB. I mean, we we should do a spread take matchup. Everybody's money. <laughs> spread matchup for it. If if Texas covers, Walmart's got a close shop. It's all HEB. And if if <laughs> if if Arkansas covers, HEB's got to close its doors. And it's all and it's all and it's all Walmart. Yeah, but I'm it sure all not. I will say on the schedule thing. On the schedule thing, we scheduled Michigan at the top of the year. When we scheduled Michigan, we didn't know Harbaugh was going to be leaving. We didn't go, oh, this is the year that Harbaugh's leaving town. Let's schedule Michigan. No, we scheduled because we wanted a huge out-of-conference game. So I on, on the schedule point, I just think that it's we're just taking care of business like you guys are saying. That game's not our fault. It's not our fault. Oklahoma, who's supposed to be really good this year with Jackson Arnold, isn't good. And he's lost his job in and out of the lineup. They were ranked when we played him. And then the re- one of the reasons they're not ranked anymore, one of the reasons Vandy isn't ranked anymore, one of the reasons Michigan isn't ranked anymore is because we beat them. So we knock, we helped knock those teams out of the rankings. They lost those games to us. So that's also I'll a part of it. Best, bro. You, you, you're, you're, make, you're speeding facts. Unfortunately, what we're also in is in a time where facts aren't really appreciated. We it, it's you know, and so it's misinformation. You want to call it whatever you want to call it, and and they don't, people don't care about facts anymore. We we truly are in an opinion led, really bad opinion led world. Social media doesn't help that, and so you, you continue to spit facts, and they actually probably know them but it doesn't fit their argument so they don't listen to it. So you're right. We help them not be ranked because we beat them. And then, We're yeah. eight and one. Michigan but, is Michigan's five and five. If they go under 500, they will have a worse record than LSU the year after Burrow and Coach O and Justin Jefferson won the national championship, which was the worst record after winning the national championship since like, 58 years prior or something like that. So this well, is, I know they have one is, more win. They have Northwestern on the schedule for sure. Hey, so and seven. you know what? And, and the difference between the big 10 and the sec is that the bo- a bottom feeder like Vandy can upset one of the top dogs in the big 10. It's, it's much less likely. Bro, to yeah. but they're not yeah. a top dog. They're five and five. No, yeah, I, I, I know, but, but I still feel that way about those two. Yeah, Northwestern, like, um, Northwestern, who was Rutgers, winning, they were winning uh, their division in the Big Ten. Maryland, those teams aren't upsetting. Anybody. Well, Maryland but, has our number. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as long as we never, no, as long as we we never didn't have our number back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. freaking Kansas had our number first. No, second. for real. <laughs> yeah, like, we're, not, we're not seeing Purdue knock off Oregon or, or no, Iowa. right, exactly, right. 
No, no, those those games are mop ups. But all that to say, like we scheduled Michigan. To your point, Josh, someone's critique of that would be like, "Well, you knew because of Harbaugh and the cheating scandal that he was half he was going to have to leave the school." It's like, okay, all right, where are we going with this? That's like a that's more to, conspiracy they theory territory. Years in advance too, like we, we don't yeah. we have like a twenty or twenty thirty matchups already yeah. set. Yes, yes, like we, we do. had no idea that I mean, they were potentially going to be a historically bad team off of a national championship win. We had no idea. I think we uh, actually move things around. I could. I have to go back and look. Florida on like the out of conference schedule, and I think they got replaced. So, I, I know we have for sure Ohio State coming up, right? Next like, year, huge. we play Ohio well, State next year. Yeah. yeah. No, I like, mean, we all these. We play Ohio State next year. We schedule Michigan. We play Bama. We play LSU. The year Burrow have it. So all these people can just hush. That what they yeah. didn't say is, oh, you had a great, you had a so-so season, but you played the national champion. They never said any of that. They're even trying to dismiss us kicking Bama's butt in Tuscaloosa last year. Bama made it to the playoff. <laughs> like, seriously. And so, they had Jerry like, yeah. and Milrow, too. Yes. And we beat them convincingly. Yeah. And so it's, it's the, the, the haters are going to hate. That's a good thing. The uh-huh. more they're hating, that means we are we're we're back to where we need to be. Exactly. <laughs> um, all right, let's talk about toss. We'll start with you. I'll go second, Q third. Nick, you'll close us out in this portion of the segment. Give me an offensive player and a defensive player you want to highlight for this game to do some uh, damage. Man, all right. We've played so well that I find it hard to do this exercise at certain points <laughs> at this point in the year. I'm serious. Like That's I fair. um because I just I still want this guy to get more carries. And we talked about it, Quan, when we did like our immediate recap. That's part of the nature of our offense is we have so many different weapons that often we feel like X player should get five to seven more touches but there's not enough touches to go around because of how well we're executing and how well we're playing. And that's just, the, that's just the fact of the matter with the Sark offense like this. Um, as long as we're putting up points, who really cares? But I would love to see Jaden blue dominate the backfield from a carry standpoint and a reception standpoint. Um, I just want to see more opportunities of him one and one with a defender in space and him leave him in the dust because he puts on that little th- three juke move that he does and no one can touch him. It's awesome. And I just I just enjoy watching it. So offensively, I'd love to see Jaden Blue get opportunities like that in this game. Um, you mentioned Anthony Hill, Nick. I think I'd like to see guys like Baron Sorrell and, and Ethan Burke um, and Alfred Collins tackle their running quarterback well and demonstrate some tape for NFL scouts in this game. Um, they've been doing it already, but like I'm just just keep doing it, basically, is my is my thing. Hey, I, ain't, Josh, I ain't worried about our DBs. That's for sure. I know you said name a player. Fucking Taz, Taz named thirty people on that thing. Yeah. I'm like, bro, leave someone for us, dog. No, Jaden Blue, Jaden Blue, and, and Alfred Collins. First in line of the cafeteria, guys. taking all the food. Alfred Collins. No, that was my guy. You stole him. <laughs> he <laughs> said Baron Sorrell to start. Fine, fine. Baron Sorrell and Jaden Blue. Those are the only two guys. Those are my guys. Oh, you picked him. You, you oh, first Lord. of all, you complain about how the exercise is tough because <laughs> totally, we're playing so well, and then you steal every guy that we have available. If we're Jaden Blue and Baron Sorrell, we'll, we'll give, we'll give you as your final answer. I I'll take four players. I'll, I'll take, what you, I need four players. I'll Come take on. over. I will continue on the Alfred Collins train because he is my guy in this segment. I think he's been our best run defender, and like you're saying, bringing down this running quarterback. I think he's going to be instrumental. We were texting about it with UQ, how he's starting to get his flowers. We want to talk about we talk about negativity in the media. There is a lot of positive talk in the media about our players individually, and Alfred Collins is one of those guys. Um, and he's starting to get his flowers in what was a very difficult position to fill. I mean, keep in mind, Tavondre Sweat and Byron Murphy, those are tough shoes to fill, and he had to fill those, and he's done that admirably. And he's been, again, by far our best run defender. So I'm excited for him in this one. He's going to have a chance to shine. They're going to try to run the football with Jackson, with Green, and and, and this is this could be a, a monumental game for AC if he dominates. If he dominates like the way he, sh- he should, like we're, we talk about guys making money, this is a big money-making game for Alfred Collins. 
wide receiver, there's a boatload to pick from. I'll go with DeAndre Moore because he's a guy we all really like talent wise, and he had a rough one last week comparatively to everybody else. He needs a bounce back game. So my guy, I would, I think the talent's absolutely still there. Of course, I think that you know we've seen amazing flashes. I would love to see him get a get right game in this one. Uh, the double, the double was, touchdown drop skis is not not what you're looking for. Yeah, that wasn't good. Uh, Q, if you're, did you ever have a tougher game that you had to bounce back from in your tenure? Yeah, actually, I, I one of the games that I had to drop at, and I had one. I actually had two drops in one season. I had no drops in one season, so I had four in four years, and so. I dropped a ball versus Oklahoma State, and it was very similar to that one. And it was over the shoulder, and um, I mean, probably we're gonna potentially be a touchdown, and we lost that game. So mm. it's one of those things. If you have a drop and you win, you don't really consider it fully a bounce back game because you found a way. Typically, you made some plays to to make up for the drop. But we actually lost that game. I still, I think I'm having like 90 yards receiving that game, but I never felt okay because we were down and I had that drop. So if we lost by three and I had a drop that could potentially been a touchdown, it sucked. So that happened. And then fortunately, I was able to make up for it the next game. That, was, that wasn't that was my senior year, though. That was my sophomore year. Sophomore, maybe junior year. So, yep, you have what's them. Your, what's, your, like, what's your mentality like? Oh, you tech. are – it's a whole different level. You, you always prepare right, you know, especially if you're on winning teams with winning cultures. You're going to compete. You're going to prepare on that level. But um, <laughs> your your boys around you kind of know. You know, it's, it's it's no difference than even my, my day job now. There's days where I'm in my zone and I'm a little ticked off trying to get something done or something happened and you're trying to problem solve. That week, you're just a little harder on yourself, right? And that's why, for me, I've never really been into a coach cussing me out because there's nothing a coach can say that I'm not saying internally. And so that week, you're cussing yourself out. You kind of feel like you let the guys down. And half the time, they're telling you, get over it, you're going to be good. But it's just a different kind of zone, work ethic, quiet. And to me, you got to earn the right to joke around and play. And, and, and why we go back to – I know Bo Davis has moved on, but when they lost to Iowa State and the rant happened – Oh, bro, it was, it's why it worked. Because for me, you lose a game, you're on mute. You're on, I mean, you're quiet and, and you don't go in and happy go lucky. I'm not going to say which co- coach this was going on with, but we lost at Iowa State one time and I'm doing the post game. And it was, you know, I think it was October 30th. And they were like, oh, yeah, we're going to be back by 12 15. Um, we still get to make. 6th Street and go to Halloween parties and I'm going what it's like this we're 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 screwed we're not going to have a good season they're still like they're still trying they're more worried about going back what year was that in the locker room they were like giddy and I'm sitting there going you just got beat 24 to 0 to Iowa State what year was and that y'all are, so, huh what year was that I don't remember it was Charlie Strong years but it was um, <laughs> <laughs> that makes more sense. And I, was, and I was so mad, and it wasn't. So this is the thing. I will can't, say this: guy can't lie. It wasn't, <laughs> Strong, it wasn't Charlie Strong's fault because I remember sitting there, and Charlie had four veins in his bald head, and he literally put his hands on my knees and he goes, "Q." I, how do? And he just vented for ten minutes. How does this happen? What does this happen? We didn't. I call you know, and I and 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 it actually I'll go. Oh, this guy actually is pretty good at X's and O's. He's in a really tough situation following Coach Brown and all of that. And then he went in there and said he heard guys laughing. Someone actually almost hit us getting out the shower, like joking. And he goes, "I can't say what he said because we're on the radio." But he lit them a new one, and they got quiet. And then they were back to planning Halloween. So it's it's. It's just a different mentality, and you're hard on yourself, but you bounce back because that's it. You care enough about the guys next to you. You care enough about your goals because that's the other piece of it. UT, like like we've been talking about, their goals are ahead of them in an unbelievable way. I mean, we talked about it when we started this, you know, at the beginning. If we're in this position now, we're 8-1, and one, 
bro, we're throwing parties. Like we're, we're, we're pumped about it and, and we're fired up. So they have so much to play for. And I'll tell you, we've talked a lot about them, but, and I usually stay away from the sidelines on game day and all of that. But the last few weeks I've gone down there because I want to feel it and their leadership. There's a lot of guys, but I just kind of talked to Jade a little bit. And when we go to a basketball game, we see each other, we're dapping each other up, it's laughing. He's one of the most phenomenal and fascinating guys to talk to. We, we, we're, he, man, to, to get in that guy's brain, it's actually, it's, it's fun. But when I say on game day, going down there, bro, it is freaking business. It is strictly business. He, it's why he's one of the best in the country. It's why he has his goals. It's why he stayed another year to try to, you know, accomplish them. And so when you have that mindset and you're focused on that level, uh, that's how you bounce back. And, and you take it out on the other team. I, someone, <laughs> I was laughing, even just driving down my Mopac the other day, I was like, somebody cut me off. They were talking crap to another car, all of this stuff. And I was like, I don't miss anything about actually playing the football game other than taking it out on somebody legally. Mm-hmm. And I would love to go knock one of these folks in these cars out legally. And gosh, that would be so awesome. But other than that, that that's, that, that's what it's about. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad you bring up John a, we won't we don't talk about him enough. The dude is not counted as one of your guys, sort, the thing. but he's a baller. The thing is, if you're not talking about a DB a lot, it means they're doing their job. It means that people aren't <laughs> catching passes on them. They're not getting touchdown score on them. Obviously, it's nice to get interceptions, but like throw Revis, like, you know, he hardly ever got people throwing at him. You know, there, there was a time in his career where like he's like, oh, I have one pick this season as a cornerback. And it's like, yeah, because no one wants to throw your way. So no one talks. Yeah, about yeah like, exactly. No, no you can't him. can't talk to him. No cell reception on Revis Island, right? Like that, like you can't. Can't even communicate with them. It was cool. I saw um, after the game, after Makuba had the interception, uh, there was like a post game interview where Jade was like propping him up and give and you know giving him some love after. So you can tell he's like a jovial guy when he's not on yeah. the football field. But when he's on the football field, different mindset, and he's yeah. and he's ready to go. Th- those are the guys for me growing up playing, um, whether it's in high school, college, middle school, whatever, like the guys that can have that internal switch that are the most genuine, good people, you know, at their heart, like at their core off the field, right? Where they're smart, they're, they take care of their teammates. They love their family. Like, and then when they get on the field, the switch goes off and they're a completely different person. They're almost like an animal, you know, a killer. (laughs) Like those are the people that you end up seeing go far that in that sport those are the leaders of the of the team that you know just understand the humanity that you have to do and have in the game of football but at the same time how to you know compartmentalize that and become a freak of nature on the field like it's it takes a special type of athlete to to remove your emotions from that you know i was one of those guys who like completely honest like you know i I was, it was a hard time for me separating my own personality and then putting it on the field, you know, like uh, mind you, I wasn't a defensive player where I had to go out and, you know, knock heads off, but you know, it, it's, there's a special type of person to, to be the, the center fielder, you know, when it comes to playing the safety position, the linebacker position, that's just manning the defense, you know, and trying to go balls to the wall. Like, you know, how I think of Troy Palomalu, like oh, the nicest yeah. guy off the field of all time. Like you he hear him to, in press conferences, his... you see him in, 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 uh, commercials, very soft spoken, everything you hear about him is super nice guy. And then he's on the field and he's decapitating people. Like, he would knock but he's, your, but he, he would knock your head off. He was <laughs> even diving like, over to the freaking pole, the pile the just post play, like post after the whistle was blown dead. I don't know if you guys remember this. The only reason why I know this is because I, I grew up and I was Greek Orthodox. That was the religion, which is a just a sect of Christianity. That's what Troy Palomalu was because he married a Greek woman. Every time he would tackle someone, I don't know if you guys remember this, he would do the sign of the cross mm. every single time. Literally, like we're talking about the whistle blown dead, and that guy was like back in his Troy Palomalu. Yeah. yeah. But I it's like it's it's a it's a maturity thing, I think, for some of the players. It's a tough thing to do to be able That's to wild 
to comp compartmentalize is one way to put it, um, to have that level of focus and to know that it's sports since we were little yeah. kids, it's an outlet, right? It's an yeah. outlet for excess energy that we all have and yeah, we don't Tom necessarily know how wrong. to do it. We don't know how I'm to do it. I'm being completely honest too. Like if, if we're looking at the guys who don't have a ton of success at the university or any school, right? The, the woe is me guys who are complaining about their playing time, you know, like the guys who transfer, like we're looking at John Tay Cook, right? Like he's a guy who just left the program, you know, he's one of those guys who can't turn it off. You know, he's not business on the field. He had a crucial drop this season already too. And like, we're seeing that he's not able to play and he's got to go. And, you know, I think with transfer portal these days too, like so many guys are more concerned about their own personal careers mm -hmm. than what is up for the team. And it's, it's hard to do, right? Like there's a lot of money on lines, life changing money. Like you can, you can yeah. literally rewrite your family's history. You can go to the league, like so many different things nowadays. So it is hard, but I do think that if you're one of those people that can just eye on the prize, you know, stay focused yeah. with well, the you, game. You hit the nail on the head one. That, that's why those particular guys get to that 1% or less than. You right. Know, ultimately, they, they get to that next level. And it, there's some phenomenal athletes I've ever played with who that didn't work out for because it, 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 if at some point, and it happens in different ways, there's kind of a studious way I had to do that. I'm, you know, five ten on my best day and, and all of that. And, and I prepared and, and I flip a switch. And, but the, there's a lot of guys who athletically do that. They, they're, they're good athletically, but then they turn into another level. It's just, there's so many different ways to think about it, but yes, it has to happen to do it successfully. And especially, as we talk about getting to the league, two things, even though the league means not for long, it's it's hard as you know what to get there. It's equally harder to stay there. Mm -hmm. And so the ones who reach a pension um, find a way to continue to do that in and out. And for that level, that league is even more because it's not college. I mean, we, we, we still wear burnt orange. Man, I don't know the last time I wore something Bengals, Broncos, or Jacksonville. I just don't. I probably did because it was old gear that I had from them around the house, but um, it's just it's a whole nother level of getting in that zone because you really don't love the team that you're playing for, but you, you're taking a lot of the same sacrifices per physically. And so, um, yeah, man, it's it's cool. But going back to this game and being on the road, I'm seeing those mindsets. You know, Collins, this is a contract year for him. Jade, you know, Taff is getting looks like he's never, you know, thought he would get um, just so many guys on these teams. Um, you had freaking one of the best defenders on the planet and Michael Parsons saying, I hope Jerry gets Anthony Hill. <laughs> People had to be, say, Hey bro, he's not eligible. He has one more year at Texas. These guys are balling right now. We see what bond coming back does for the offense. Um, I, I will say this, that's one of the biggest, maybe knocks or question marks on Quinn. Quinn's physical abilities are as good as anyone. He can hit windows when things are rolling. He's good. We saw it this this week. But can he be a franchise quarterback? And the reason being, not that I have my doubts, but the data of a playoff game, the data of the Georgia game, um, one of the Oklahoma games, um, it's just stuff like that that he's going to have to continue to evolve and develop into that mindset i get it you got the commercials you got the distractions you got a lot of stuff but if you want to be that overall pick or a top five pick he has work to do and he has an opportunity to continue to do that so yeah we, we I, saw some distracting things this weekend too we won't get into it. some <laughs> screenshots yeah. hey well i heard those were debunked so we don't know yeah yeah, yeah. A, a, i mean it's college, it's it's a, a great quote point i did fake news <laughs> oh, gosh, uh -huh. <laughs> I said to quote Quinn's Idol, "Fake news." That was yeah, no, no crap. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh... oh, which, which no, we don't even want to go down that because half of the fake news for his idol was real. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I'll just I'll pivot real quick. I, the thing about <laughs> NFL quarterbacks, and I think that's that's overlooked often because they're so heavily criticized, and not a lot is talked about what happens behind the scenes with those guys. And I think you might have already mentioned his name, Josh, but Tom Brady's the he's the goat because of his discipline and his focus and his consistency. He showing up 
every single day to do that job. Like you have to have an inhuman amount of discipline to be an NFL quarterback, to be an NFL player just in general. And you Juan, obviously, you're the only part. one that can attest I mean, to that. But you see him, what he's doing, like life after football too. Like everything is competitive with him, whether that's broadcast booth. <laughs> I saw a clip with him today with his kids, like playing that little ball game where like he put the like string on the ball and you like punch the ball and see how many times you can do it. And he's just like fired up that he's beating his kid. <laughs> it's like, dude, yeah. <laughs> you're a hall of famer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, bro, they have to earn it. The world's not won't be easy on them. Kick their butt until they beat you. They're, they're I, only gonna get better. I like it. He's, he's an example of what Nick was saying, though. Like he is jovial at times off the field. Like he's yeah, like there's a reason he was in the locker room that long. Guys like him. No, like, they love him in the locker room. Like LeBron, guys like him. Like he's funny. Like his teammates like him. Like Gronk is the ultimate example. Gronk is like a clown, as people think. He's he's like the most jovial, goofy he's guy. One of the most serious guys on the field. You got to take him seriously, you know. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Dude. He's a he's a he's one of, if most. not the biggest matchup nightmare in the history of the sport. Like, yeah, yeah. So I think you, that that combo of both is is really good, and I think it's good to hear that Jada has that. And you talk, we don't talk about him enough. And Nick's right. Like, if you're not talking about a singular guy on the defensive backfield, it's probably a good thing. But we do talk about that unit and the. They're, they're our strongest unit. Yeah. Makuba, Taff, uh, Barron, Muhammad, they're all getting drafted. Derek Williams, when he comes back next year, like these are all professional players. So it's been our strongest unit. Jade has been absolutely fantastic. He's got Andrew Armstrong from Arkansas, who's not one of these top-tier drafted receivers in this upcoming class, but he's still a 6'4", 800-yard receiver, and he's still a talented player that Jade, you know, and the defensive backfield has to account for. Yeah, it ain't, ain't bad. bad. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll go with some of my impact players. So I think on the defensive side of the ball, um, on that second level, obviously we talked about how the quarterback can run, um, but he can also pass too. So I, I like this guy to drop back in coverage, but I also like him to spy the quarterback also to get in the backfield. He's a guy that honestly we haven't talked about enough. It's Leona LaFowle. I think that Josh, you love him. Um, but I think he's one of those guys that is going to stay active all game long because obviously the eyes are on Anthony Hill, but LaFowle can be the guy to to put the spy on the quarterback and make sure he doesn't get anywhere. And then of course, drop back in coverage when the running back comes out of the backfield and, you know, wants to make catches. So I like him having a big game and then the offense side of the ball. Um, I'm going to stick with my, with my guy, Matthew Golden. I mean, had a good game last week, um, but I, th- I still want to see like a, a big yardage game from him. You know, I feel like he he's a big red zone target, but I want to see more consistency with them getting him in the mix, you know, um, on first, second, third down, not just only mm-hmm. in the red zone. It's productive, but, you know, I think he's a guy who still has a lot of, um, you know, draft stock to gain. You know, we talked about how, you know, right now some mock drafts have him as a fifth rounder, some have him as a third rounder. I personally believe that he's he's got second round talent, and I think that he needs to prove that a little bit. You know, I think he's got speed, he's quick, runs really crisp routes, got good hands. I mean, I just don't think that he's gotten the the love that I think he deserves, right? I, I don't necessarily know that he's gotten the targets that I think he deserves, and that's just because we have a ridiculously deep wide receiving core this year. Um, but I think this is a week that he can really do that. Um, yeah, so those are my guys. Nice. I I was thinking about Golden. I, I I'm aligned with you. Like I would love a m- more full game from a stat sheet standpoint. I think that's a good point. Uh, Q. Anyone else you want to throw out, and then you could give us your score prediction. Yeah, my last one is Banks. Um, last time we were there, their D line destroyed us, and they got some dudes on that D line. Um, Landon that, Jackson. They, they gave Tennessee a run for their money. So I wouldn't say Banks. Honestly, I guess I say all the, the all the the linemen. Um. But talk about making money. Um, we do lean on that left side even more. Um, NFL on NFL type guys. Uh, Banks held his own, in my opinion, even when it didn't look like he did. Um, and I'm going to stick with offenses. Quinn. I mean, they was embarrassing the last time you got to, to Arkansas. Um, if you want to – because he'll help Banks. You step in the pocket when Banks runs them around you, you look good. You deliver to the best receiving core in the freaking country. And so, um, yeah, man, I, I I think Banks slash the O-line and then Quinn, who looked the part last week with a lot of time, but um, the little things it takes at that position to make your O-line right um, as well. So, it's uh they're gonna come at us. We know that um that they have a signature win this year, so they can do it. It's just a matter. Of, but I'm 
and I think we all agree, if we play our game, we get that lead, it's going to be hard for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I want to quickly throw out there as well that their O-line isn't anything that special because they gave up eight sacks against Ole Miss a couple weeks ago. Yeah, but Ole Miss has one of the best D-lines in the country. They do. They do the same thing they, they on do. Georgia. I think, D-line on Georgia. I, I think we can you know, put four up, at least, at least four. Five or six would be excellent. But We do that. They're going to be in big trouble. Oh, yeah. Yeah, agreed. Uh, Q, you want to throw some scores? Road game, Arkansas, they should be fired up. Man, their defense is just suspect. They have like three DBs out. God, we should destroy them from a pass game standpoint. But it's on the road, and we got to prove it. So I I think we we win. What's the line, by the way? 13 and a half. 12 and a half? Yeah, it depends where you you, depends where you look. I I'm seeing twelve on one side, thirteen. About to say, on so another. is it coming now? ESPN's got it at twelve right now. Okay, so I, yeah. I honestly think we cover. Uh, I I think it's one of those deals where thirty five, twenty one. Mm. Okay, two score because the running quarterbacks give us issues. So I think they're going to score. So I I think they'll score a few times. And yeah, but I think we're going to score more. So I think it's a 35. And you know what? I say 35 now because what we haven't talked about is old curly hair. He needs yeah. to get his stuff together. We're going to need him in the, in the long run. And I would have called I would have said, you know, 41 <laughs> or 38, but he's missed some, dude. And it's not yeah. even close. So you want, you, want, like, you want that head and shoulders contract. Like, you got to, like, you got to, I mean, or come or on. Man. Money. You want to yeah. ditch the moniker old curly Listen, hair? Hey, I'm going Tom <laughs> Herman on him. I'm not calling him his name until he makes a good long field goal. <laughs> he is curly oh. hair until he makes one. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but I'm I think go early in the time. season, we didn't give him enough opportunities to have him gain that confidence. I feel like there was t- plenty of times where he passed up on the opportunity to kick a field goal. And, I feel like in college football, you really need that for your kicker. Like Damn. it's all about reps, you know, because everything is just between the ears. Like it's, it's, you have the talent to be a college division one kicker, but do you have the brain, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, you better have the brain if you want to play yeah. at the next level. So yeah, I d- or not make the freaking field goal. He may, he's missing layups. It's not like Sark is throwing them out there for 60 yarders or even 50 yarders. You got to make 42 yard field goals if you want yeah, any. Yeah fraction of a chance at the next level yeah. no because guess big, what what is this think, what's the extra point now that's a big position that you want to address in the transfer portal in my opinion extra extra yeah for real uh, the extra points what 30 some 33 yeah so i'm again he's missing 33 yards that's extra yeah. points oh yeah he's not been what we need him to be um all right uh toss we'll go you we'll go me and then we'll get mariana rivera Hit the ball. So Quan Quan went with thirty five twenty one, yeah. which would take the the total score to fifty six. I th- I have the over under at fifty seven and a half. Um, so that game would be going under, but that's right around Quan like where they have this game being right. It's thirty five twenty three essentially would take yeah. it just over. Um, if we're the number one defense, they ain't scoring twenty three points on us. That's what I'll say. Like, I'm, and if we're going to keep demonstrating what we did against Florida on offense, which I don't know if we'll be able to do it to the same degree, they're going to eat more clock. They've got a quarterback who can run, not a third string quarterback who just transferred from Yale. Shout out to that guy. He's playing for his hometown team. Really cool. <laughs> the guy's playing for the Gators. Um, so I, you have to respect them a little bit more, I think, just from a score prediction standpoint than you, than we did with Florida. Um, but I do like, I like 35. I like that number. And uh, I'll go with I'll go with seventeen for them. Okay, I like that. Yeah, I mean that guy literally just proved that Yale is, stinks. It must be the least fun school of all time to give up that education. And go I mean, he's the third string quarter. He didn't think he was. I don't think he thought he. Was yeah, I'm just saying. Like, um, thirty five seventeen, thirty five twenty one. I don't know. Ole Miss rocked them. I know they had some injuries, but Ole Miss lit them up. Like why I know it's on the and I know it's on the road, but like why not us? Why not us lighting them up too? So I'm going I'm gonna go forty two and I think they put a couple buckets on us. I'm gonna go forty two twenty one. I think we doubled them. Yeah. 
because that late game, that's what Florida did. We beat the brakes yeah. out of Florida, but they scored the late game, the late, the late points. They freaking went for three and was down five touchdowns. So I'm going to take happened. some from each of you. This was a prediction that I had before you guys even made your predictions. 52 21. <laughs> nice. Oh, we're gonna. You have us beating the brakes off of. Well, man. I think I had us beat the brakes off of Florida last week too, and you guys were in silence You're for right. seconds. And you know what? You, you, you did. Right. I missed that that call by like a few points. You've been the closest week in and week out. I think, right? I believe in this team. <laughs> well, other than Vandy, other than Vandy, not Vandy. Correct. Yeah, Vandy, you had us Vandy, yeah, Vandy way off. And I, I didn't was, think I was off for Georgia too. <laughs> 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 well, we all were off for Georgia, except uh, yeah. you. Can I just real quick say we didn't we yeah. didn't talk about this? We're eight and one. We played nine games. If we are to be a national champion, we have to play seven more games, including this Arkansas game. We're basically just past the midpoint of the season with the extended playoff. This is a long season. Wait. Even there, if we have three games. It. We have a conference championship. We have a quarterfinals, a semifinals, and the finals. Well, we, we might yeah. we get a bye. Even with the bye. You're right. Even, Even with, with the, the bye. bye. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know. Oh, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't think I, I didn't say you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, we kind of did. We kind of did. We kind of did. Kinda did. Hey, it's hey, good. I'm, I'm just like, I'm just trying to get the math behind it. Seven games. Seven games. So just. It's it's buckle up time. Like we're we're not close to the finish stretch. This is a we got it. We got a ways to go. So keep up the, the energy. Keep up the tenacity and yeah. and go do your thing. Which honestly is why you play that inspired because that buy could be big. I'm I'll be honest. I very insanely selfishly was like, yeah, I'm okay with being number five and somebody else going to the SEC championship. When you put it like that, and these kids aren't used to that many games, no, that by the way, I'd rather everybody else have that extra game because just by pure – And God forbid injuries and, too, right? Like, yeah, there's a lot of things that can happen during that well, week that I wouldn't want it to happen for us. So I, we'll get a, we'll get a week. we'll be the SEC champions. Let's be real. That'd be bad. We'll I mean, get a week no matter what between A&M and the SEC championship if we get there. So there's – because that's the last like – yeah. Is that the Army Navy game? Is that when that what's going on that weekend? I think mm. maybe they changed that. But yeah, yeah, will, that would still be even two of them then per exactly two guys. two so weeks is better. that's more than yeah. Take as many advantages as you can get. So oh, not to says, mention, oh duh, if we get a bye, we get a home game anyway. So yeah, heck yeah. Come on. No, we don't get we looked no. it up with the home game. Oh no, us. it goes to the dang bowl games. You're yeah. right. Yeah. But that's like the thing is, is I, I heard someone say the five seed is the quote unquote best seed because you get the five seed, you get the home team, you get boys. Yeah, it's State. not though. I don't care. But it's not but like you want the bye, and then that bye week will help that. You have to go undefeated in a quarter of a season. No, thank yeah. you. I will play three games instead of five. I agree. Every, I totally agree. <laughs> like we can get I, that another year. I, I want to take care of business. Get the I want because it'll mean we won the freaking SEC, dude. Yeah, that's a big deal. Cause, but you know what's better than the five seed? The one seed. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll <get> exactly. <laughs> exactly. 100%. Uh, Fisher to stop with DJ Nikki's next card of the Quan Cosby. Enjoy the game. We'll see you guys later. We'll see you guys okay. another time. Hook them.